Yo, 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 what's good? This is Chairman House of Barf. Yo, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I was working on some trades and everything, looking at doing some research. And, you know, if I could just, you know, just I'm just going to talk very briefly uh, if that ever happens. Um, just imagine what my strange partner would say, how much I talk. Like, he never shuts up. Uh, but um, so with these trades, there is a lot of there's a lot of shit surrounding around like strike price. I don't even know exactly, you know, um, you know, how the contract prices are figured out on like option contracts. You know, I'm not exactly sure all, uh, all this stuff. This is what we're supposed to be researching. Um, you know, there's a lot with the stocks and the bonds and the exchange traded funds and the REITs and the mutual funds. And there is a whole lot with that. And I, I will admit, and that's why I really do want to get to a point where we're breaking it down. I, um, I'm not sure. I just, I was looking at something. I think I may have sell a house that I like uh, for sale. I'm not sure, though. Um, but I don't got no money right now. But if there's anything that I can say to just kind of simplify it, you know, don't, let's try not to make this too freaking difficult to understand essentially when you're bullish again when people say bull typically a bull will knock you up in the air okay and it's not that bears don't knock you in the air you know uh but bulls typically dip their heads down and will shove their horns up and then bears will typically you know run at you get big and tall and then come down on you so when you're bullish on something, essentially, you know, um, you know, I always think about my trap stars. I always think about my youngins or even my my unks, you know, trapping out there, you know, and, and not so much if, you know, if you got yourself together, you got this all under control, you know, whatever, um, you know, but maybe for somebody who feels like, you know, they may have entered something that that is not them doesn't feel good you know they're trying to find another way um but still the mentality is there and that's what's important the one thing that you, it's kind of hard to understand is that how smart of an individual we are it's kind of it's like nah that's not supposed to be me i told you one time i was at work and somebody told me a couple of things it's time to start using your difference no actually that was at the ritz carlton no 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 i was at work i was at work um, yeah, I was at work and I said, it's time to start using your difference to make a difference. And every year we look at everyone else and we're always saying, no, no, that's supposed to be, you know, his churn and her churn and their churn and they're more passionate and look at them. They're crying and, and they're trying to undercut people and they're trying to like ruin people's careers. Yeah. You got all that going on, but sometimes there's going to be a time where it's time for us it's our time and i feel like in my mid-30s it's my time i've been doing too much you know looking out for buddies and looking out for family and everybody and trying to make everybody else happy you know but at the same time i was i, I felt like i wasn't taking out enough time for myself and it's very possible this is your time this is our time and what i mean by not making it too difficult is you have the mindset for example, if you were, let's say you were trying to make some money, right? Would you buy, let's just say, let's go with an onion, an onion or, you know, an ounce of, let's just say, you know, a product, uh, you know, let's just say weed, right? Let's say an ounce of weed, right? It's legal now in Maryland. Let's say you're going to get an ounce of weed. Would you get an ounce of weed for $400 and then sell it for $300, you know, and that's, I'm not trying to be condescending or anything. But that wouldn't make any sense. That's not what you're trying to do. Now, would you buy it for a hundred dollars and then sell it for three hundred dollars? Yeah, right. But what else do you need? You need somebody to buy it. It's no point of you saying, "Hey, I got this onion for three hundred dollars," but nobody's purchasing it because they can go somewhere else and buy it. So then you bring it down and say, "Okay, I'll sell it for two fifty And then somebody says, "You know what? For convenience or whatever purpose, they say I'll buy it." So you bought it for a hundred, sold it for two fifty. You made one hundred and fifty dollars. Now you can go back and buy maybe another one for a hundred, and you made fifty dollar profit. 
That's essentially all we're thinking about with the market. That's all we're thinking about. Now, on the other side, it's kind of harder to explain because sometimes even my brain can explain it. But essentially, it's like you borrowed, you know, the weed and, uh, you know, and you sold it, right? I know this is a little bit different. And let's say that you got to buy it back, right? So you sold it to somebody. Let's just say, for example, I don't know. You're on the phone with the plug and you're on the phone with a potential buyer. So you call the person that's a potential buyer and you, 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 the plug, I'm sorry, you talk to the plug. They already told you, look, I'll sell this to you for, you know, a hundred, right? So you say, Hey, look, um, uh, see, it's a little bit more difficult with this situation, but you call somebody, you say, look, I'm going to sell this to you for a hundred, right? And I'm just going to keep it simple. Uh, but we sold it for a hundred. You don't have anything yet, right? You have nothing yet. So you go and you, you got, you got the phone call taken care of. You say, I'm going to sell it to my man for a hundred. And you, the plug says, yeah, sure. Okay. Sell it for a hundred, but you don't give the plug no cash, right? You just say, I gave it to my man for a hundred. And next thing you know, some time goes by and you talk to the plug and they're like, Hey, um, you know, you never gave me the money for that onion that you sold. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. You know, and you go back to the plug and you say, okay, well, how much do I owe you? And they're like, you know what? The prices have kind of dropped and uh, it's, it's, only, it's only $90, right? So you're like, oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So you got, you got the 100 from the person who uh, bought it. And then you give a hundred to the plug, so then you got ten dollars in your pocket. You know what I'm saying? And that's a little bit different a scenario because it's not too many times that's ever going to happen. It's very possible it could happen some way, some shape, some form. But that's more so when you're going bearish on the market and you're you're making money on the markets going down. You know, you can make money on the market going up, and you can make money on the market going down to an extent. You can even make money if the market stays flat. Now, that's something I got to study. It's like a strangle. That's something I got to study uh, and I'm trying to learn about, you know, uh, but, you know, in the sense of just not making it too difficult. I know that second part was a little hard to explain. Uh, and you know, I don't think I explained it too well, but that's more so just keeping it simple, not getting it too complex. Uh, but then it does get difficult when it's like, OK, so what is it What you know, a stock and buying power and why is he buying stocks and then he's trying to buy options. Well, the re- that for that reason, the options give me more buying power. So, for example, uh, before the end of business, I bought 100 shares of Taiwan Semiconductor at like $97. That was approximately 90. It, it was like nine. It was like ninety seven hundred dollars, you know, approximately. It was like nine thousand seven hundred and like ninety dollars or some shit. And um, if I was to buy the option, I probably would have had to put up, uh, probably like, let me see. I would have had to buy the contract. Uh, I would I would have had to see how much the contract was going for. But I probably could have put up, let me see, 100 shares, I mean, uh, 10 contracts times 100, that's 1,000 contracts, at, let's say it was even something crazy, like $9.60, $9.60 times 1,000. I could have put up uh, $9,600 for 1,000 shares. You know what I'm saying? I probably would have only had to put up, I don't know, probably a few thousand to get a thousand shares. You know, even even just to get like one contract, which is a hundred shares. What I got, I probably could have put up like a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars to have the option to buy the underlying stock. Now the thing that's crazy is, if that money, uh, if I have to uh, go towards if that option gets exercised, then that shit's going to get wild because then I'm going to have to put up like thousands of dollars. You know what I'm saying? That shit's going to be nuts. And that's not what we're trying to do. Yeah, I'm not trying to get in no trouble like that. 
See, when I buy the stock long, all I can lose is the money that I invest. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm, the main point I'm trying to make is just, no offense, keeping it simple, stupid. You know what I'm saying? And just like that. All right. Um, when I, once again, I want to thank anybody and everybody who decided to come kick it with your man, Chan Man. I appreciate it. This is Chan Man, House of Barf.